Mic is all free for my beat. I'm about to rock. From the hood where the hammers beat, I move fast, better switch pace and pop a list of reasons. So it's crazy how much has changed for Lloyd Banks since the last time we talked about him. And that was all the way back in 2019. We spoke about his debut album Hunger For More debuting at number 1, how he got named Mixtape Artist of the Year, and how he was perceived as the punchline rapper in G-Unit. Not to mention him always venting about his issues with his label and not always feeling supported. He was dropping fire mixtapes left and right, but the views weren't always matching the bars. Banks was always sort of seen as the quiet guy in G-Unit and his relationship with 50 was complicated to say the least. He was loyal for the most part, but 50 would still take little shots at him here and there. More sibling rivalry than anything too malicious, but eventually he did leave G-Unit. So buckle up, cause his story is still unfolding. What up guys, Ali here and welcome to Ali Talks Music. Add me on Instagram at Ali Talks Music as well. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Now let's get into the video. Now when Lloyd Banks dipped from G-Unit around 2018, it definitely raised some eyebrows. Why would he leave the legendary label he's been down with for years? Well, a few major factors were at play. First, we gotta talk about how G-Unit is not the dominant force it used to be. Back in the 2000s, they shaped hip hop, no question. But the game has changed. Labels like TDE, OVO, and Young Money took their spot and began pumping out chart toppers and becoming the new face of rap. Plus, let's keep it real 50, the general behind G Unit, is not exactly leading the troops anymore. He saw the money dried up in hip hop and left to pursue TV and acting. It was a smart move for 50, but it left his artists in a very weird spot. I mean, if the general isn't riding into a battle anymore, what's a soldier like Banks supposed to do? With 50 now focused on Hollywood, Banks had to make a power move to keep his own career going strong. So eventually Banks left to go independent. Now after leaving G-Unit, Banks was like, okay, I need to start making some money now. He then launched his own clothing line. Keep in mind that at this point it had been over a decade since he dropped an album, so Banks had a lot of work to do. Now when this happened some people questioned the timing of it all. They wondered why he didn't try to launch his own clothing line sooner. But the answer is Banks was tied to contracts and after he left the unit he was allowed to do his own thing. I mean if you're keeping track of the G-Unit saga, then you probably know that Young Buck is still signed to G-Unit, a label he wants no parts of. But because he's still under contract to 50, 50 has been able to stop Young Buck from putting food in his mouth. So yeah, Lloyd Banks had to leave G-Unit in order to do his own thing. Then around 2020, things got really awkward for Lloyd Banks and 50 Cent. In this year, 50 dropped a book, one called Hustle Harder, Hustle Smarter. In this book, 50 talks about his transformation from the guy on the street corner to a well-paid businessman. Oh, and he also took a big giant dump on his former teammates. 50 got brutally honest about his former G-Unit crew, including Banks. He straight up called Lloyd Banks lazy and said Banks never quite reached his full potential. Success of power was one of my greatest accomplishments. Then one of my biggest disappointments is the unfulfilled potential of Lloyd Banks and Tony Ayo of G-Unit. Both Power's rise and G-Unit's fall are testaments to how growth is often the key element in any successful journey. I always felt that if I had done a better job teaching Banks and Yayo how to evolve and change their habits, they each would be in better places right now. Instead, they both stay stuck in their mindset, and as a result, the success they desired has eluded them. In Banks' case, a lot of his failure to grow as an artist is connected to his emotional composition. Banks grew up in the same neighborhood as me, but was never a part of it in the same way. I actually hustled with his father. Banks was more content staying on his porch and watching the world from there. Now when the unit was in their prime, it actually seemed like Lloyd Banks and them were really good friends. But 50 has always been vocal when he thinks someone is slacking off. That sucker's on the what phone. Up, Don't what's up me, you sucker. Huh? Don't what's up me, you sucker. I should black your eye. So, so she gonna black my eye? 
I said, don't what's up me, you sucker. Tell them I was on my tour bus in 2003, you punk. And you created an area where everybody could try and hate on me. You know you're a punk. You know you're a punk, Q. You know I'm the wrong one to even be playing with. I never was a punk, B. I was a good dude for you. Yeah, you was a sucker. He clearly feels like Banks could have accomplished more if he wasn't so laid back. As we all know, Banks drops music in his own timeline, regardless of commercial success or anyone's criticism. So even if 50 thought Banks should have been more ambitious, Banks was very comfortable in his lane. But you know somewhere deep down those comments from 50 gotta sting. At least a little bit. I mean when your former partner in crime calls you lazy in a published book that potentially millions of people are going to see, that's gotta mess with you somehow. Now it seems like Banks took 50's words to heart because around 2021, he finally came back with an album, one called Course of the Inevitable. At this point, it had been over 10 years since Lloyd Banks dropped his studio album. And let me tell you, it was vintage banks through and through. The audacity it takes to rank me with a style I invented. With my credentials like his jury, it gave my flowers cemented. Banks still had bars for days, but there's a definite difference in sound here compared to his last album. For starters, 50 is not on this project. If you remember, whenever an artist from G-Unit dropped a single from their upcoming project, 50 was usually on it. How we do with the game, so seductive Tony Yayo and Lloyd Banks is on fire. All of these songs featured 50 Cent. So when Banks dropped his new project and 50 was not on it, it let the world know that Banks had moved on from the unit. More specifically, he had moved on from 50. Now without 50 on the project, you can tell that it's missing some radio friendly songs. The entire vibe of the project is very gritty and more underground. And it's clear Banks is clearly focused on dropping bars versus dropping hits. Uh, everything on heavy water on your prop bezzy make my prezzy rock steady. My confetti is a blend of blueberry. Too many crosses on my line. New selling. Overall, the album was a very strong return for Lloyd Banks. The hits might not be there like back in the day, but he proved that his pen was still sharp. So then around 2022, Banks appeared on the Joe Budden podcast and you could tell he was feeling very nostalgic about the old days. He talked about how mixtapes used to be a big deal back in the day and how having bars used to mean something as well. It wasn't just about getting a hit song or going viral. He also spoke about how social media has changed the game, which is ironic because 50 has said before that Banks hated doing social media and said he was not going to do it. Apparently Banks' logic was like, legends like Pac and Biggie never needed social media, so why should I? Another time I sat down with him, just when IG was starting to pop off and tried to drop this gem on him. You gotta get on Instagram, I encouraged him. You can be a little awkward in person, so this is actually a better way for you to communicate with people. Nah, I don't want to do what he said. Why not? You can literally put punchlines under your pictures, make some new fans. Nah, that's corny, he told me. Before adding Biggie and Pac didn't do that sh They're dead, my man, I told him. They died before this stuff was even invented. And how do you know they wouldn't be posting on IG if they were alive? It was a line of thinking that really blew my mind. It suggested that if Tupac was alive, he'd still be wearing leather vests and red bandanas tied around his head, sending girls his beeper number. Or that Biggie would still be wearing Coogee sweaters and playing Mortal Kombat 2 every night. It's ridiculous. When Banks made that comment to me, I realized he had gone as far as he can go. In fact, my exact thought was, this is someone I can't invest another minute or dollar in. Now this way of thinking was very peculiar, especially considering Tupac and Biggie did not have Facebook, Instagram, or Snapchat to deal with. But I'm willing to bet that if they were alive, they would be all over IG because the game has changed. You have to be visible to your fans nowadays. And that's something Lloyd Banks failed to grasp earlier in his career. But it sounds like Banks' views have evolved over time, especially when you hear him on the Joe Bottom podcast. He seems to have a lot more appreciation for what social media can do for an artist and no longer sees it as a young man's game. That same year in 2022, Lloyd Banks dropped another album. This one was called Course of the Inevitable 2. I guess all that lazy talk from 50 Cent lit a fire under him. Once again, as far as lyrics go, Banks was as nasty as ever. Uh, camouflage arms for sneak approaches. 
Can't defy eyes, don't keep the focus. Nigga ain't no more punchlines, I keep explosive. He was diving into vivid street tales over grimy beats. Now one thing that was very interesting about this album was that Tony Yayo appeared on a track. We all know that Yayo and 50 are mad close, basically brothers. So for him to appear on Banks' project makes me wonder if 50 gave Tony Yayo some kind of approval behind the scenes. Hey yo, murder in my DNA, genetics got a killing trait. Curry brothers, not the one to bowl, the one that moved away. Another very interesting thing about this album is that Lloyd Banks finally addressed 50 calling him lazy. He did this on a song called Stranger Things. Who never bite the hand and feed you, that's disrespectful. What if what's in the hand deceives you, now you're regretful. And let's just say Banks had a lot to say. Banks said the following. Your favorite's nowhere near me when I'm dedicated. Always humble, usually disciplined and never hated. Call me quiet, call me lazy. Talent never faded. It's frustrating when your grinding ain't appreciated. Now with these lines, it's clear that Lloyd Banks is trying to say that he's not lazy. He's also trying to say that his talent is undeniable regardless of what people say about him. Banks also dropped some other lines that go as follows. Don't ever bite the hand that feeds you. That's disrespectful. But if what's in the hand deceives you, now you're regretful. I brought integrity through every area. The jet flew. It's like I see a stranger, nothing like when I met you. At this point, I don't care to keep a friend again. When you get on to checking in, that ain't genuine. Now with these lines, you can clearly tell that Banks doesn't recognize the person that supposedly fed him, that being 50 Cent. He also went on to call out his fake friends, including 50, for only being there when they need him and not to actually check on him as a person. Overall, the album was a mixed bag. As mentioned earlier, it did not have any hits, but Banks' core fanbase doesn't really care about that. Now it seems like Banks is in album mode. He dropped a sequel to his previous album this year, and it was released through money by any means. So at the end of the day, Banks is proving that he's not a lazy artist. He has been dropping a lot of music as of late, proving his passion for music is alive, and well, whether it was 50's little jabs that lit that fire or just Banks' natural artistic evolution, the man is more active now than ever before. As far as 50 and Banks go, their relationship feels like sibling rivalry. 50 is like a teasing big bro, while Banks is the withdrawn little brother, never fully clapping back at his older brother. And let's be real, G-Unit as we know it is history. Without Banks and Buck, G-Unit as a brand now lacks the authenticity that made it iconic. But don't think that means Banks fell off. He still has a cult following, and as far as dropping more studio albums go, it seems like he's far from finished. Banks will probably never reach the heights that he once achieved in the past, but at this point, after being in the game for about two decades, Banks is now doing things on his own terms. That's it for me, it's your boy Ali. I hope you liked the update on Lloyd Banks, knew what happened to video dropping soon. Also add me on Instagram at Ali Talks Music too. Next time, peace.